Yep. 12, good idea. So we're looking at 3.7 homework and we're on number 12. And um, this like set of problems is all slope is zero or undefined. So they're all the hoy bucks. I knew as soon as slope was undefined that it was my bucks problem. So I knew vertical undefined x equals. So I just took what my x was and that's my equation, x equals four. Mm -hmm. So all of them really shouldn't have a lot of work. They should just say x equals something, y equals something. Any other questions on this paper? Anything at all? 13 was x equals negative one. Again, another um, just straight vertical. Jane? Y equals zero X minus one. Um, that would not work for this one because technically the zero is with like the Y because it's a vertical line. For the horizontal lines, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So for the one above it, you could have written that. Yes. Cooper question? So which one, number one? 11. So since this is a horizontal line, um, we just use our y equals and it's just the y value. And to answer what Jane just said, she was like, well, if I can use my y equals mx plus b, my b is negative one and my m is zero. And I said, yes, that's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on this paper? We okay with graphing? We okay with writing equations of lines? Eli? 15. So it says, write the slope intercept form of the equation. Um, it goes through the point 3, negative 5, and it's parallel to y equals negative 3x minus 4. The being parallel part, I only care about the slope because I'm going to use that slope in this problem. I'm going to use the same slope. And then I'm going to use the new point 3, negative 5 to help me find my b. That's my x1 and my y1. So I plugged it into point slope form and then I was able to simplify the slope intercept. Cool. Anything else? All right, if we have nothing else, if you have a paper, just keep it on your desk. I'll get it in a second. If you have it online, submit that one if you haven't already. And then we're gonna go to 3.8. So that looks like this one. It looks like I've got a lot of crazy writing on here. I want to zoom in on number one, though, because I could argue that you don't necessarily need all this algebra. I just like to show all my work. So if you were like confused on how I got my slope, it's a lot easier to point to the algebra. If instead you wanted to just count the points on the graph, you could do that too. I could be like, oh, I went down this many and over that many. And on this one, I went down this many and over that many, and they're not the same. That's also fine. Is there anything on 3.8 you want to talk about? Mm -hmm, Tamara? Number 12, that's a great one to talk about. Number 12 is a word problem about stairs and ramps. Now, if you go to the ramps by the science wing, you know that like the handrail is the same slope as the actual ramp. Because if you're holding your hand on the ramp, it should be at the same height the whole way. It doesn't like go like higher as you go lower or it doesn't get like significantly lower and you're not going lower. The handrail always has to be the same distance from the floor. So that means that their slopes are parallel. So it says that we have a, we're putting a handrail on this ramp and it must be 35 inches above the ramp. So I'm gonna go over to my graph. The one thing to note is that each grid is seven units. So in order to go 35 units up, I'm only going up five boxes because each box is seven. So I go up five boxes and that puts me from 0, 4, 42 to 0, 72. So that means that my um, handrail starts at the point 0, 77, and then it goes down at the same slope as the other one. So I said its coordinates were 0, 77. That's where I put this big, this dot right here. And then I want to do an equation. My slope is the same for the, um, as the same as the ramp. So you can go to the graph and just look. I went down one and then I went right two. So that's a negative one half slope. You're welcome to do like actual math. So like I did like M equals um, zero minus 42 and then 84 minus zero to find the slope between this point to this point. But it's the same as if I just counted down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. 
it's the same. And so I didn't even have to do any point slope or any real solving for B. I knew my slope was negative one half and I knew my B or my Y intercept was at 77. So I just plugged and chugged. And then I was down there. So um, I know that the B is 77 because I know that I started at 42 and I know I had to go up 35 units. So you could have just done 42 plus 35 and that would give you 77. Good question. What other questions do we have on this paper? Anything else on 3.8? Caleb? Four? So it says, are they perpendicular? So from here, it might look like they're perpendicular, but we want to find out algebraically if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Again, you can do the math out like me, or you can just count. I'd be like, okay, well, I know I have a point here and here. So for this line, my slope is down one, two, three, four, and then right one, one, two, three, four, five. So this slope's negative four over five. So my other slope should be positive five over four, but it looks like my points are here and it goes up one, two, three, and then over two. So are three halves and negative four fifths opposite reciprocals? Nope. That's it. And then I just would write no. What else on this paper? Yep, yeah, Chantal. Number eight. All right, it says write each equation in slope intercept form, then determine whether the lines are parallel. So we have to get it into y equals. And once it's in y equals, then we're going to decide if the lines are parallel with each other. So um, the first one I had to minus my 10 y from both sides, then I, or sorry, minus my 130 from both sides, and then divided by my 10. So I got 5x minus 13. And then in the second one, I had to just divide by negative 5 on both sides, and then that gave me my y equals. So it's in, it's in slope intercept form negative 2 over 5x minus 11 over 5. And then I compare my slopes. Negative 2 over 5 and 5 are not the same, so they are not parallel. Oh, what other questions do we have? Anything else on this paper? All right, if you have it on paper, just keep it on your desk. I'll come get it in a second. If you have it online, turn it in. This is good. I expected we would have more, most questions about three, two. So I wanna make sure we've got plenty of time to talk about that. All right. What I want us to do first on three, two is that proof that we haven't done yet. So you were supposed to leave that first one blank because I just wasn't ready to do it yesterday and I'm ready to do it now. And I actually have it all filled in and I'm just gonna walk through each step I would probably just write one step at a time as I do it. So I'm at the top of your page of your three, two proofs. Everybody see that with me? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna kind of just zoom in and zoom out as I go, but you haven't done this one yet, so we're gonna talk through it together. The first thing is the problem said, um, given L is parallel to N and prove measure of angle two it plus measure of angle seven equals 180. We always, always, always start with given. So I started with L is parallel to N and I wrote that's given. So that's my first step. After that, I had like not a lot of direction. I knew I wanted to do something with seven and two. So I had to pick two or seven and do something with them. And I chose to go with seven. And I was like, all right, if I pick angle seven and an angle around two somewhere, then I'd be able to prove something. So I picked seven and three. Seven and three are corresponding. So I was like, oh, I know that they're congruent. So I wrote seven, angle seven is congruent to angle three. And my reasoning was if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. 
That's pretty self-explanatory. We did that yesterday. Like we, we know how to do that. Where it gets a little bit complicated is I'm eventually gonna have to get to this measure of angle two plus measure of angle seven equals 180. So I can't have congruent signs. I gotta have an equal sign in there. I gotta make the angles into measurements. I gotta go from objects to numbers. So if I wanna go from angle seven is congruent to angle three to an equal sign, I have to make the measure of angles. If you go from congruence to equality, we call that definition of congruent angles. Stop, what are you doing? So I went from angle seven is congruent to angle three to measure of angle seven equals measure of angle three. And if you recall all the way back to unit two, when we first started proofs, that's called definition of congruent whatever. And in this case, it's angles because I'm talking about angles. Everyone okay with that so far? Okay, I'm gonna go back to my picture because now I have seven and three. Okay, I gotta get three and two somewhere so I can do some substitution or transitive or something in there. Three and two are related because they are a linear pair. So they're gonna be supplementary. Now, what we want to write is you want to write angle two and angle three are supplementary, but we don't do that. We make an equation. We go directly to measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180. The reason we're allowed to do that our linear pairs are supplementary. So we have to write the equation measure of angle two plus measure of angle three equals 180. Now I'm ready to do my last statement. I'm ready to do measure of angle two plus measure of angle seven equals 180. And if I zoom in, we can easily see how I'm able to do that. I just put in I only changed this part right here. I replaced measure of angle three with measure of angle seven because I know that they equal each other. And we call that substitution. So this is not transitive, this has to be substitution. And again, that's just a reminder of all the stuff we did before this. So I've done those two lines and this is the last line. That's substitution. Yeah, Caleb. Mm -hmm. Caleb asked, do you have to do step number three? And I said, yes. In order to go from a congruence to an equality, you can't substitute in an angle for a measure. So we have to be in measures first. Great question. Any other questions on this tomorrow? Oh, no, no, I, I meant on this, on this proof. Any questions on this proof? Okay. Kamar asked about questions on this whole paper. Let's just go like step by step. Let's go one at a time. I'm okay going a little slower on this one. Let's look at the next proof. So on this page, we just did the top one and then we did the last two together yesterday. So you have the middle two to do. This one gave you all the statements. So now we have to look at all the reasons. Number two was simple like we've done the last couple of days. If lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. And then between two and three is like what we just did a second ago. If you go from congruence to equality or vice versa, it's definition of congruent angles. And then the last one, you can call that substitution or transitive. When we do um, congruence, it's always transitive because you can't substitute an actual object. We're just substituting numbers. So I would probably lean towards doing this as transitive there, either one is fine here. And that was something I didn't really stress before this. But if it's a congruent sign, it must be transitive. It can't be substitution. On this one, though, it's equal. So I will take either. Questions on this one? Can I look at number three? OK, here's number three. The one thing that was different here is it talked about angles one and angle three, and those guys are vertical angles. So that's why they're allowed to be congruent. We really got to get used to using the picture. It's going to be super helpful. There's no way if I was not given a picture, if I would know why one and three were congruent. So we got to use the picture. It's going to be helpful. Any questions on this one? No? We feeling okay on proofs?
right. Can I move to the back side? Okay. All right. This first part, did anyone have questions on that? All right, now let's look at number one. I have my statement here, and then I have my equation, and then I solved. If you had trouble with these, I would worry more about copying down the equation than copying down everything, because I can't sit here long enough for you to copy all of those things down. So if you got something wrong, I'd maybe check your equation, and if yours is wrong, rewrite mine. Um, I had to do alternate interior angles first. Um, 8x minus 10 and then 7x. I set those equal to each other because alternate interior angles are congruent. Then I chose to do these two angles, which linear pairs are sup, set my equation solved. Yes, which, which angles did you use there? Great point. Yes, yes, that's exactly right, Kate. So Kate said she used the consecutive interior pair. Totally fine. But and she made sure that her math matched whatever her statement was. And so you used a different statement because your math was reflected that. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this one? Should I keep moving or are we still looking? I'm gonna take that as we can move, right? All right. Um, we did that one together. We did this one together. So you had to do this one last night. This is similar to the last one we did where I said it's helpful to cross off what you don't need. So like to do my X's, I have my two parallel lines and a transversal. Those are consecutive interior angles. You could literally just ignore all of this it doesn't affect anything at all. So if you need to like scribble that out for a second or like cover it physically with your hand so you can see like what is the only thing that's important, please feel free to do that. You also could do that with um, the other side. So once I looked at my X, I could find my Y by just doing these two together and ignoring all of that. And since it was the same reason, I didn't have to write a second statement. I just used the first one. Any questions on that? Yeah, Caleb? And those are technically equal to each other. So Caleb asked if the ones on the left side were equal to each other. Technically they are here because this one's 90 and then so this one has to be 90 in order for them to add to 180. So what you could have done is you could have just set these two equal to each other, but that would be like a, like a, like a right angle reason, like all right angles are congruent, something like that. All right, shall I keep going? All right, so now we're down to the last two. This one has a lot going on, so let's break it apart. First thing I did is I found X by doing um, X and 106. Those are um, consecutive interior, so they're supplementary. I added them up, set them equal to 180. Oh. I thought that was pretty easy. The other second one I also thought was pretty easy and you had two options here. You could have done a linear pair with 106 and 2Y or I chose to do um, corresponding angles because X and 2Y are corresponding. So I said if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So I did 74 equals 2Y. Now, where I think it got confusing was letter Z because there's technically nothing that's related to angle Z. This spot right here, um, X, where X is right now and where 4Z plus 6 is, there's no name for that relationship. If you see right here, I wrote vertical lines are congruent, or vertical angles are congruent. I technically moved X up here 
because I know these two must be the same. If that's X, that's also X. And then I was able to say, okay, now I have a relationship because these guys are consecutive interior and they are supplementary. So I think that you might have had trouble with Z because you might not have realized that you could move things around. We also technically could have moved like 106 up here because these are corresponding angles. And then you could have said, oh, well, these are corresponding, so they should also equal each other. That's fine too. Just make sure your statement and your math match. Do you see why I'm allowed to move things a little bit? Okay. So you might have found X and Y super easy and then maybe we're stuck for Z. That's okay. I thought Z was the hardest part of that one. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> He's not teaching this period. Mm, he might be in the science hallway. All right, any other questions on this one? All right, let's look at the last one. This one is just like the one above it. I've got two consecutive interior angles um, that are supplementary. So these guys are supplementary. So add them up, set them equal to 180. These two are supplementary. Add them up, set them equal to 180. Since they were the same thing, I didn't have to write two statements. I could just write my one. And then we solve. Questions, comments, concerns? How are we feeling? On proofs, give me like a hand. Give me one, I have like zero idea what's happening. Two, three, four, I'm feeling okay, but I've got some questions. Five means I'm feeling pretty good and I think I can do this by myself. Give me some hands, where are we at? Okay. Okay, good. All right, I don't see any ones, which is awesome. If you're at a two, three, four area, that's also a fine place to be. This is hard stuff. And sometimes it's just like, I can, like, I understand why you do it. I just can't do it on my own. That's what we're building at these next couple of days. Okay. We do not have proofs going on today though. Um, and let's actually be done. Let's go to lunch. Um, what is it? 30, 30 minutes from now is 25. If you have papers for me, bring them to me or leave them on your desk or I'll come get them. And then we'll come back at 1225. Yes. I want all three of these turned in. Mm -hmm. I might have another geometry kid in here, but you're welcome to come. Yeah, I'll be here pretty, not like super late, but like I'm not in no rush to leave. So if you want me to with your chemistry teacher, then come to me. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Caleb. All right. Ellen, say you guys are welcome to stay with us or um, leave for lunch. I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to stop my record.